for this, I would like to invite Dr. V. Jema, Associate Professor, SBIC Nipton Tanjavu. Madam Kaur has graduated and a doctoral degree from Tamil Nadu Agricultural University in Food Science and Nutrition. She began her career at the NIFTMT as a senior researcher with specialization in functional food product development at Food Processing Business Incubation Center. Madam has received several awards, including the NIFTMT's Dr. Subramanian Well Scientist Award for Outstanding Research. She was the awardee of fellowship by the University of Saskatchewan and Saskatchewan Pulse Grower Association for Doctoral Research and Women Scientist Research Fellowship at Department of Science and Technology for the development of diversified functional food products. Now, Madam will provide us insights on value-added products from rice and by-product utilization. We welcome you, Ma'am, to this webinar. In this session, we are going to discuss about the value addition of rice. Uh, as you well know, uh, that we have the uh, n number of uh, varieties of rice we have. So, the why value addition of rice is important. So uh, you can see we when we compare with the other cereals, so the rice it play major role in as a stable grain uh, for the uh, consumers, and as well uh, the, it provides more calories per hectare than the other cereals. So the carbohydrate uh, which are um, our food uh, plate, you can see 80 percentage of the carbohydrate food we have. So among these uh, uh, fractions. The rice play major role as a, a stable food for the consumer. So it uh, it has the because it has the remarkable edible values uh, as we uh, we have uh, compared with other stable grains uh, such as uh, um, other made fine grains and as well the uh, coarse grains. So it has the uh, important properties. We could say it's more uh, the most digestible properties and non acid forming. Uh, properties, least allergenic effect, and ease of processing. So also we consider uh, this rice as a warming grain, non-glutinous, so remarkable edible values it has, so that we have a, a good amount of rice. Um, more than 1,000 varieties of rice are we are cultivating in uh, around 100 countries. So wherever that uh, uh, sea level uh, altitude is uh, uh, up to 3,000 meter high, we used to cultivate a n number of uh, different varieties of uh, rices, uh, except uh, Antarctica, all the continents also, we have the um, um, multiple varieties of rice, pigmented rice, and as well, we have the popular rice varieties in terms of uh, aromatic rice, medicinal rice, and specialty rice. Uh, and uh, also, each... Uh, um, Popular rices also, we have the uh, number of varieties, uh, that versatile varieties, we could say that our uh, popular basmati, jasmine, jeera, um, ampampu, and then um, navra, and raksatali, this kind of uh, medicinal rices also we have. And also we have the bold variety and fine and uh, uh, short and long variety and vaxi and non vaxi variety. So multiple uh, varieties of rices also we have. So these varieties, we have the specific eating characteristics. So as of you know, when you do the value additions and do the processing, that eating properties and these functional properties playing major role, then only it can be suitable for the processing. As we consider when we compare with other fine grains rice, it has the specific uh, suitable properties, we could say pacing properties and uh, we can do uh, soft uh, varieties and hard varieties, flaky varieties, and also during processing, no cracks and splitting uh, unique properties. It will help us to uh, process for the uh, further value addition and more swelling due to the uh, functional properties of amylose and amylopectin ratio is a very balanced ratio we have. Uh, that will help us to uh, get the less expansion in girth and more elongation in the length and uh, cooking of that rice, we can have the good retrogression properties. These all the uh, eating characteristics uh, will help us to process the functional and uh, value addition into the rice. And also we have the different fractions. Not only we have the popular and the uh, versatile variety, we have the milling fractions from the standard milling of rice. You can see uh, that each fractions we have the uh, diversified product. 
out of the raw rice uh, we can produce brown rice and white rice from the white rice further it, we have the fractions of broken rice and red rice but when we compare the nutritional uh, contribution among these uh, uh, fractions uh, so uh, more than 80 percentage of the uh, nutrients are constituted in this uh, rice bran so in terms of uh, we can say from uh, whole grain into unpolished rice and uh, um, brown rice and uh, further it goes to the refining process to get into the white rice so each fraction uh, uh, we have the specific uh, functionality uh, especially endosperm uh, this abundant uh, uh, contribution of energy and carbon and, uh, and protein and bran it has the uh, full of uh, the layer full of uh, nutrients in terms of vitamin b and minerals and also germ it has these uh, specific amino acids and fatty acids as well each uh, fractions especially the bran fractions we have the abundant uh, nutrients uh, uh, which is present in the bran getting losses during the milling that fractions further we can get into value addition because those fractions it has more than 80 percentage of vitamin b1 67 percentage b3 and 90 percentage b6 and half of the minerals in uh, especially magnesium and phosphorus and iron also it has uh, present um, uh, constitution in the bran uh, so these milling fractions are so further we can uh, um, use in into the valley addition during milling so you can see the monetary value of uh, rice and pulse milling industry byproducts is per year more than 20,000 crore um, uh, losses we are facing these fractions it has this uh, good amount of these uh, fractions as we you know that 90 percentage of starch uh, when you do the fractions of uh, uh, this bran and other uh, layers it has the uh, good uh, amount of uh, amylose and amylo uh, pectin balance that will help us to process into value added product and presently we have the if you go to supermarket so the number of uh, product uh, out of um, uh, rice it is very rare so only we can have a choice to select the product in terms of uh, raw rice and further parboiled rice and flour so except these uh, milling uh, milled uh, uh, products we don't have the choice to get into the valley addition apart from the traditional processing we used to practice for the flaking puffing and popping uh, based on these traditional pra practices uh, further futuristic approaches uh, involved into the adoption of advanced techniques we could able to produce the n number of uh, valley additions into the puffed and uh, popped rice that is the murmura and flaked rice further we can compress and make it as a pressed cake that will be a convenient to consumer and also it has the good amount of vitamin b so the futuristic approach will help us to um, get into value addition in rice industries milling industry further into the uh, tertiary processing so those flaked puffed and popped rices further we can make it as a uh, rice cake so that will be a convenient choice and also recently you, you can see that ready to eat and ready to uh, cook product and convenient product it has the good um, uh, demand in the market so those flattened and expanded rice further we can make it as a poha and military and murda murmura we can or chibda we can use for the further savories and make it as a convenient into the form of compressed baked bar and the uh, confectionery bar and that will be given a, a good palatability and acceptability to the consumer because it has the tangy flavors and also yeah, there is a choice to micronutrient fortifications by using these milling industry by, by products. Uh, so uh, further value additions, it will be convenient for the consumer uh, two minutes uh, uh, cup noodle kind of uh, uh, savories and breakfast uh, uh, things we can able to produce out of this uh, uh, our uh, traditional process and further uh, these fractions uh, uh, since it has this good amount of uh, all soluble fiber and battery fiber so it can be um, the fractions further we can make it as a starch and that starch also it has the uh, good amount of water absorption capacity and oil absorption capacity so that will help us to uh, produce this uh, um, ready to eat kind of food products uh, for example uh, that kakra um, uh, in the form of roasted and dried form tortilla and crackers uh, we can make it as a convenient and packed form and pakari type of instant uh, 
um, uh, mixes also can be able to produce it. that will be a semi fried spiced tortilla and uh, our tradition our own traditional puppet processing uh, by using of the um, compressed extrusion technique and um, um, uh, screw extrusion technique we could able to produce the tortilla type of uh, uh, snack bite so that will be a very popular snack uh, which is commercially available in the european market it is uh, made by uh, masa that replay uh, masa in, and it is called as the uh, processed maize meal is maize meal maize meal maize grit is used instead of that we can replace it with rice grit and uh, rice uh, uh, meal can be used for this uh, processing of these tortillas and further these tortillas uh, uh, further it can be valued with the uh, addition of uh, our morical leaf powder and this our vegetable and fruit flavored uh, one that will be a uh, uh, colorful flavorings and uh, apart from that uh, our uh, um, indigenous technique uh, technical knowledge on uh, germination bioprocessing technique will help us to processing the gaba rice it is very popular rice in taiwan and malaysia so because this kind of rice it has the good amount of uh, gaba amino butyric acid so it can be uh, uh, gaba rice and also further it can be flattened by using of the flaker so that we could able to get high protein rich uh, uh, um, uh, flakes out of these our, our own traditional rices. This uh, gaba rice can also be produced from our traditional popular rices in the Navara rice and Kauni rice and kind of uh, uh, pigmented rice also can be used so that we could able to this uh, uh, gaba amino butyric acid is a functional component and kind of a stress releasing components it help us to improve the serotonin hormone which is help us to memory power and this uh, uh, stress relieving component. So further, this kind of flakes, we can make it into the uh, cookie and pasta so that further it can also be uh, ready to eat and ready to kind of uh, food products. So it will be increase the energy level of the food uh, for the consumer and also it has the good amount of other uh, pigment in terms of chitin, vitamin B, carotene, calcium and as well the anthocyanin. So um, further, the uh, in the beverage industries, uh, process industry, beverage industries uh, in infant stage in India, um, we don't have the choice for the um, uh, rice-based beverages. So there is a lot, um, a lot of uh, opportunities there. Further, malted grains uh, by uh, liquefaction and sacrification process, we could be able to produce this uh, uh, millet uh, uh, combination with rice. Milk that will uh, we can be able to process into uh, beverages kind of bill bill is a very com very popular in Cameroon and in Nigeria the Brukutu kind of beverages is very popular and Ghana also Pito East Africa we have the beverage like Bompo uh, kind of uh, uh, beverages are commercially available so. Um, uh, similar versions of um, our rice based um, uh, malted beverages uh, there is a lot of uh, opportunities there in uh, by using of the malted grain and grits further it can be processed into beverages and as well this uh, uh, milk also it, it can be uh, uh, processed and packed in in the form of milk so that uh, vegan milk becoming very popular so further that milk you can be converted into desert and kind of different versatile uh, form of um, um, frozen desert in uh, we could say uh, for, for examples of uh, desert in terms of ice creams and gelato uh, kind of beverages uh, can able to process and um, uh, it's a successful model we have in non-dairy ice cream which is developed uh, using this uh, millet milk in similarly we, uh, it can be able to produce uh, the ice cream uh, using the rice milk uh, so already the technology was uh, transferred to one of the companies uh, village rice uh, that industry that uh, um, that uh, technology developed from nifta it transferred to the industry we are uh, producing this uh, fiber rice that rice uh, uh, they are using for this process and uh, our own traditional breakfast cereals wherever if you ask that European kids they uh, they uh, prefer most uh, most of the kids and the youngsters they prefer our India South Indian rice uh, based uh, dosa and idli so uh, these rice and uh, idli we could able to produce in the form of a mixed form uh, and instant uh, uh, instant rice batter can be able to produce out of this and uh, 
by using of the extrusion techniques, uh, we have the choice to processing the snack food. The snack food uh, uh, commercially available in the uh, first generation, second and third generation snack food. So by using this advanced technique, uh, uh, hand pounded uh, uh, rice ball uh, uh, convert into this uh, this compressed kind of the supplementary uh, food uh, can able to produce by using the compression molding technique and also you can see that the rte market ready to eat food market in india currently estimated more at uh, 128 crore it is expected to expand to reach uh, 2,900 crore. So the big demand in this kind of ready-to-eat food product uh, in the form of uh, that rice uh, uh, bran uh, can be converted into edible cup, edible plate, uh, cutlery kind of this, and then uh, that um, our rices we can make it as a quick cooking meal in terms of instant meal uh, and instant uh, to a three minutes uh, breakfast meal can able to process by using of this. And also by using this uh, man-made engineering technique in terms of extrusion technique will help us to produce the uh, convenient food as well the long self life food because the extrusion process uh, will help us to produce low moisture food uh, so it can be extendable self life. So out of this process technique we can um, have the first generation, second generation and third generation snack food. The first generation snack food we could say example that is our puffed rice. So that we, we can be converted into second generation extrusion technique snack food uh, by using the completely expanded uh, uh, product uh, uh, can able to produce with uh, using the single uh, screw extruder. For the third generation snack food, we can able to produce by using the twin screw extruder. Out of this uh, twin screw extruder, we could able to produce a wide range of shapes and the textural modification we can do uh, with uh, coating with split filling uh, or uh, core filling and um, outer uh, core um, outer layer of uh, the uh, enrobing and coating with the snacks that also can possible and another advantage why we are called this uh, kind of food as uh, engineering food um, we could say engineers design and fabricate the machine similarly our food engineers can able to design the food according to the special nutrients requirement for the special person because the nutrients requirement is different for the each group. It is not similar for the all the group. A geriatric person's nutrients requirement is uh, compared with the youngster, it will be totally different. That uh, school going children nutrients requirement is high protein food and geriatric person nutrient requirement is uh, high energy and low um, uh, protein, uh, high protein food and low dietary fiber. So, it depends on the nutritional requirement, we could be able to produce this food by using of these extrusion techniques. Uh, so, that uh, this missionary line will help us to produce cold extrusion as well as the hot extrusion kind of uh, completely extruded snack. So, uh, by using of this extruder further, it can be a coating with a sprayed uh, um, coater and the spray or sprayer where we can use for the uh, uh, coating of the spices and the sweets out of the uh, um, after processing. Uh, so um, uh, for the, the third generation kind of extrusion snacks in time uh, in terms of uh, co-extrusion and it's a pellet kind of food and a direct expanded snack food and crispy flat bra flat bread bread snacks and the multi-grain chips also can be able to produce by changing the temperature and the pressure. Uh, and moisture content of the um, feeding materials, we could able to produce the single uh, twin screw extruder uh, that the multi variety of uh, snack food can able to produce. So um, um, this product uh, we can say uh, the differences between second and third, second generation snack food is a direct expanded ready to eat kind of food and third generation snack food is becoming very popular because it extended shelf life and also uh, we can reduce this uh, spoilage during storage. So further it can be uh, according to the choice of the uh, customer uh, and processor, further it can be processed into hot air popping or frying or baking. Uh, so that is that versatile hmm, uh, form of the processing that uh, the hurdle processing uh, we can approach, we can apply for the processing of third generation snack food. Uh, well, these breakfast cereals also can be able to produce uh, um, by using of these byproducts of rice milling industry, bran and broken rice, the uh, selling cost of uh, broken rice is uh, 
lower cost that will be convert into the serial fee you will get the good amount of profit out of this so that broken rice is uh, further it can be processed into uh, products because the rice it has this uh, amylose and amylopectin ratio within the fractions. So best good extrusion uh, product should have this amylose content uh, should, be, uh, should be around 20 percent. If you can see that non-vaxi and vaxi rises also, we could able to get this amylose fraction so that it can help us to produce extruded, uh, hot extruder and as well the cold extruded kind of pasta product with the combination of other fruits and vegetables also can be able to produce. So successful extruder product we made with uh, uh, gluten uh, uh, free, uh, gluten free and with a uh, rice based uh, uh, product which has this high amount of protein. You can see that using of this rice with a combination of other moringa lip powder, you can achieve the protein content and this fiber content. Uh, it's a well balanced amount of these nutrients present in this product. So, uh, also with the combination of these uh, uh, pulses, uh, uh, um, we could able to produce this uh, uh, good plate uh, because the reformulation of uh, always uh, we have the choices uh, with rice and uh, in the entrepreneur, it is uh, someone else on home, it will be given a good opportunity. So, in the uh, our government of India also supporting lot recently for uh, a startup, uh, different schemes will support. And in Nifta Maya FPT, also we are uh, uh, given the uh, technology transfer program and technical guidance services and training and uh, hands on training program for, for the industry and all the uh, lines who are. Um, available facilities in incubation center uh, where we, uh, we are offering uh, to the uh, startup and industry for the test market trial and as well the, for the startup. So the successfully people, uh, people are trained and, uh, and nowadays they are uh, running in the industry successfully. Thank you. Thank you so much ma'am for such an informative session. Moving ahead to the next technical talk on non-chemical pest management in rice storage. For this session, I would like to invite Dr. Yang Subhanti, TNAU, Professor Entomology, Kanvatu Tamil Nadu. Madam is an entomologist with specialization in integrated pest management. She has undergone four international and 14 national training programs such as Advanced Training Come Workshop under US India AKI and SPS Risk Analysis, USDA FAS Professional Scientific Exchange, and international training program on plant biosecurity at various universities of United States. She has been awarded with 32 awards, including Tamil Nadu Young Scientist Award by Government of Tamil Nadu and Best Women Scientist Award and Best Teacher Award by Tamil Nadu Agricultural University Coimbatore. She has published 20 books, 50 book chapters, 32 and 54 research papers in international and national journals, respectively. We welcome you, ma'am, to this webinar. Uh, good morning, all of you. Um, uh, myself, uh, Dr. M. Suhanti, Professor Agriculture Entomology, presently working as uh, uh, working in the Department of Namalwar Organic Farming Research Center at uh, TNAU Coimbatore. So today I'll be presenting non-chemical pest management in rice storage. So we all know the stored product pests, that is insect pests, diseases, rodents, birds and moisture, all these cause a lot of damage to the stored producers. And of a uh, total of 6.5% damage caused by these insects, rodents, birds, and moisture, insects alone contribute around 2.5% damage. So these stored product insect pests can be broadly classified into internal feeders and external feeders. So we are going to see how to mitigate these internal as well as the external feeders. So if we see the current state, uh, status of this insect pest, there is a statement called, no granaries in India can be filled with grains without insects, especially in countries like us. It is mainly because of two issues. One is field carryover infestation because most of the pests, they are carried over from field to storage. And another one is cross infestation. So these are all, uh, there are a variety of uh, storage methods. Uh, bag storage, traditional storage, bin storage and silo storage of which most of us we follow this bag storage. So the available pest management options 
in front of us now is chemical control. So there are two ways of chemical control. One is fumigation, another one is spray. Under fumigation, we have two chemicals for fumigation. One is aluminum phosphide, another one is methyl bromide. When we are using this aluminum phosphide for cover fumigation, we have to use three tablets of three gram each per ton of grain. And if you are going for shed fumigation, we have to use 21 tablets of 3 grams each for 28 cubic meters. And the period of fumigation varies between 5 to 7 days. Whereas, when we use this methyl bromide for fumigation, for all the storage pests, we need 32 grams per meter cube area and it has to be fumigated for 24 hours. Whereas, the, the serious pest called copra beetle, for the management of this pest, we need 80 grams per meter cube area and it has to be fumigated for 48 hours. Otherwise, we can go for some pesticidal spray also like malathion, DDVP. These are all very commonly available practices in front of us. But if we talk about the impact of these chemicals, definitely we all know that is the reason why we are plan or, or why we are in the process of shifting towards organic. Because <clears throat> nowadays these organic producers are gaining momentum. Probably you might be you all might be aware of it. Nowadays the uh, the uh, demand for organic producers both in the domestic as well as in the international market is growing like anything, and the farmers of uh, Tamil Nadu, they are in the process of shifting towards organic. So what are all the available non-chemical pest management options? Brush the cracks and crevices and corners and remove all debris because the debris present in the storehouses or the cracks and crevices, they serve as source of inable. So these have to be cleaned or the cracks and crevices in the storage goodons should be properly covered or it has to be brushed and we have to remove all the waste materials in the goodon before staking the produces. This is first and foremost important thing because this serves as a source of inoculum for subsequent damage. The second one is we have to maintain the threshing floor free of insect infestation because we may think that we are uh, storing a good produce. Be before uh, bringing them to the good owns, they are, th there, there are a lot of chances of infestation in the threshing floor itself. So the threshing floor also should be maintained cleanly. Then drying to optimum moisture content of 10% because if the moisture content increases beyond 10%, definitely it leads to, I mean, uh, outbreak of pests in the during the process of storage. And sun drying. Sun drying is a traditional age-old practice, but it is a wonderful practice for the management of stored product pests because sun drying. When we dry the seeds or the grains under the sun, definitely it kills the life stages of insects. So if we kill the life stages of insects, we uh, clean the grains before storage, definitely the pest load or the damage can greatly be reduced. Then there are variety of insect deduction devices. That is early deduction devices. That is what we are going to discuss in this uh, session. So those devices can be very well utilized because early deduction helps in managing the pest. Like if we see the infestation right at the beginning, we can very well reduce the damage, I mean extent of damage. Otherwise, if we are not noticing it on time, definitely it leads to great loss to the, I mean, uh, owner of the product. Then use of insect-proof storage bags. There are variety of bags available, large-scale for large-scale storage. I will be discussing in detail about that. Then carbon dioxide fumigation. It is a wonderful practice. This what is the, it is nothing but instead of using this methyl bromide fumigation, we are just going for carbon dioxide because the insects also like us. It needs uh, oxygen for its survival. When, when we reduce the level of oxygen, when we by increasing the level of carbon dioxide within the storage container, definitely it leads to mortality of the insect pest. So this carbon dioxide fumigation is also gaining momentum. 
then mixing with dried neem and nochi leaves this is a age old traditional practice but it is being practiced by most of the organic farmers of tamil nadu so dried neem leaves shade dried neem leaves or nochi leaves it can be very well mixed with the grains or seeds before storage so that the storage space can be very well minimized and mixing with activated clay or diatomaceous earth this is a wonderful principle it is activated clay or actually uh, probably we all may be knowing when, uh, when we were young uh, this uh, uh, our ancestors our grandparents they used to treat uh, this red gram seeds with red death so it is nothing but it is a physical poison so similarly we have this activated clay or diatomaceous earth or silica like material it is nothing but this powdered formulation of clay so when we treat the seeds or grains with these formulations when the insects are moving over the treated surface the skin of insect get damage and it will not be able to lay eggs also so it acts as a physical poison so this is a wonderful organic practice we can recommend for uh, I mean, uh, treating the uh, seeds or grains for organic uh, storage then treatment with acorus calamus that is wasambu oil or powder in tnao we have developed wasambu powder and this wasambu oil is already it is available in the ec formulation one of our professor dr nelson he has prepared it and uh, this uh, toxicological study is in the progress so this oil it is available in emulsifiable concentration ec formulation it can just be mixed with seed or it can be used as a spray solution also and this azadiractin what is this azadiractin it is a derivative this alkaloid present in neem so purified formulation of this azadiractin that is azadiractin 10000 ppm is also available in the market so those commercially available neem formulations can also be used for spraying over the strikes so these are all some of the uh, novel methods for our deduction devices so we can broadly classify these deduction devices based on its usage one is for home another one is for farm another one is for warehouse for home we can use this probe trap and pitfall trap for farm probe trap pitfall trap indicator device tnau uh, two in one model device automatic insect removal bin insect removal device these can be used in the farm for warehouses we can use light trap automatic insect removal bin as well as the stay probe trap i'll show the images so that and all the videos of these devices are available in the youtube i'll give you the link so that you can uh, whenever you find time you can just go through the youtube channel uh, this uh, uh, link and you can view those uh, how these uh, devices operates so these are all different gadgets developed at tnau for storage pest management so uh, if you google dr mohan dr s mohan tnau you can find his website he is the one he was actually the store product entomologist actually he was the one who is uh, who is to take this class but he, since he is out of country on behalf of him i am handling this session so all these devices were developed by dr s mohan he was a retired entomologist from tnau he is a store product entomologist so he has designed all these traps we are going to see one by one this is called tnau probe trap so this is the model the one on the left is the one developed during 1992 and the commercial model available right now in the market is one on the right side so it is a wonderful thing used in storage space management especially it is used in the household also if we store the rice in the bins at home we can use this trap so that we can monitor the presence of our infestation of beetles and this is called as tnau pitfall trap mainly we use this for detecting the infestation by pulse beetle in the case of pulses so this is called two in one model trap so the probe as well as pitfall trap they have been combined so it can be used for 
monitoring of both rice press as well as it is both used in rice as well as in the pulses storage. This is for floor trap. This is to detect or monitor the presence of insects present in the floor. The next one is cup biopsy or indicator device. So the one on the right side is a indicator device. So you have to dry the seeds, sun dry the seeds, clean it and stake it. Before staking, before storage, we have to take a sample and place it in this device. So when you see the insect emergence or when you see the insects trapped in the bottom uh, cup or in the tray, you can come to a conclusion that your storage material, the stored material is infested with pests. So it, is a, it acts as an indicator device. The another device is known as TNAU, Automatic Insect Removal Pin. And these are all different models of different varying capacity. That is 25 kg, 100 kg, even 500 kg capacity bins are also available. And this is TNAU UV light trap. So most of the warehouses, they have this UV light trap to trap the moth pests that are uh, available in the storage codons. And this is called TNAU insect egg remover. So we have to feed the grains inside this device and if you if the grain passes through the machine <clears throat> the insects the uh, egg of the insects that are attached to the surface of the grains will be completely removed so this is machine operated insect egg remover so it is the cleaning capacity is 20 k uh, 20, i mean 200 kg per hour and approximate cost is 175000 it is also under patent so this is called TNU Stack Probe Trap. It is a commercial plastic uh, model and it is also patented product. And this can be inserted in, I mean, inserted in between the stacks so that the inf insect, in, because every time we cannot remove the stack and we cannot check for the presence of insects. So if we place this stack probe trap, definitely we can see the inf I mean, uh, level of infestation by this insect. So here I have given the, uh, this is the UV LED light trap. This is also used in the uh, goodons for uh, monitoring the storage space. Here I have given the details of uh, Dr. S. Mohan. At the end also I have given, if you want, you can take a screenshot so that uh, for further guidance on these devices, you can very well contact Dr. Mohan. So he has uh, developed this small kit also. This is called TNAU Stored Grain Insect. I mean, insect pest management kit. It is a small prototype model. So it is mainly used for educating the students as well as the farmers. So this uh, uh, kit, it has reached several uh, countries also, I can say. So this uh, TNAU developed, this uh, traps are being used by more than 5 lakh people across the country. Around 300 numbers of state agriculture universities and Krishi Vigyan Kendras, they are using this TNAU kit for teaching as well as training. Apart from India, it has reached Rwanda, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Turkey, Egypt and France also. If we consider this northeastern India because you know northeastern India, in northeastern India, this uh, uh, especially they are uh, in the process of Especially, see, if we talk about Sikkim, they are 100% organic. They are not supposed to use uh, any chemicals even during storage also. So for those type of, uh, for areas with 100% organic, they can very well use these devices for management. So in Northeast India, around 5,000 farmers, they are using this insect removal bin for paddy seed storage. Apart from this, these devices, they have kindled the scientific temper of school children also and several children they got national and international awards based on this. So this is a technology's cross border uh, I mean out of India. And apart from this, this TNU traps, it has been included in the school education also, especially in the 11th standard book. If you see the state board book, we can see this about the traps also. So this TNAU automatic insect removal bin demonstration was given through QR code 
and it is included in the chapter called Harvest and Post-Harvest Technology in the 11th Standard Book of Tamil Nadu State Government. And for the innovation of these uh, devices, storage devices, Dr. S. Mohan, he has been awarded with a lot of awards. So apart from these devices, novel devices, we already talked about this carbon dioxide fumigation. It is, we can call this as an organic method. So if we treat the seeds with carbon dioxide fumigation, we can uh, state that the produce is organic. And it is, I mean, uh, suitable for export also. It effectively eliminates all forms of infest infestation, I mean, uh, pest infestation by creating low concentration of oxygen inside the container. There is no risk of chemical residues and it is eco-friendly, environmentally safe. And we, <clears throat> if we use the chemicals for fumigation, on fine morning, the insects will develop resistance. But in this case, this carbon dioxide fumigation, the insects will not be able to develop resistance because it is not a chemical. It is just reducing the level of oxygen and due to asphyxiation, the insects will die. So there is low risk of exposure to chemicals upon fumigation. So these are all the advantages. Apart from that, there are certain pro bags also. We call them, it is commercially available bags. Grain pro. Grain pro. So it is available for a different capacities. It is made from PVC. The lifespan is up to 15 years. So the one on the left is known as Grain Pro Cocoon. The another one is Grain Pro Cocoon Cargo. So here the warranty is up to 5 years. The lifespan is up to 15 years. So it can be used for storage of huge quantity of these grains. So here apart from this Grain Pro Cocoon Light and Grain Pro Grain Safe Bags are also available with the two to two to five years of warranty, but the lifespan is up to 15 years. We can use it up to 15 years. So this is called super grain bag of high capacity and this is grain pro cocoon indoor. So it is used for storing the grains of capacity five to 20 tonnes within the indoor. So what are the advantages of using these grain pro bags? So the uh, extended warranty, like uh, uh, it, it can be used up to 15 years and it is made from UV protected PVC material. So it can be used indoor as well as outdoor and it is very easily installable. It requires minimum tools and no permanent structures are needed. So if it is not in use, when we remove all the sticks, when we uh, sell the produces, it can be just folded and stored if it is not in use. And it utilizes any available flat surface. It doesn't need any specialized structures. And it is usable as storage as well as fumigation chamber. That is the main advantage of it. If you store the grains without any infestation, it can be used as a storage chamber. And if you find insect infestation within this, uh, during the process of storage, it can also be used as a fumigation chamber. That is the advantage of it. So it has an outlet as well as inlet port for convenient flushing of this carbon dioxide. So for carbon dioxide fumigation, we can very well use this grain pro bags. So this is another one. <clears throat> it is known as FIBC hermetic pouch. So it is a it is a made from polythene. It is an outer liner protection. Outer liner protection for this flexible intermediate bulk containers. It is the outer liner protection. Here also we need only minimum uh, investment. It works as that of the grain pro cocoons. So this uh, pouch is available <coughs> for varying capacity from 500 grams to 1 ton. So here I have given uh, my contact, uh, uh, my contact, my WhatsApp number, my mail ID, as well as the 
mail id of uh, dr mohan his uh, contact number is also uh, given here you can just note it down if you need any clarification re regarding the devices storage devices that he has developed you can very well contact him and i am the entomologist working on organic pest management not only for rice for all other crops so in future if you are interested in organic farming and if you are practicing organic farming if you come across any pest and disease problem you can very well contact me at any time with this uh, whatsapp number i will be readily available to clarify your doubts we are uh, training several farmers like uh, uh, we are, we are uh, <clears throat> during the past 3 years we have trained more than 20000 farmers on organic uh, uh, cultivation of uh, uh, the both agricultural as well as horticultural crops as well as this organic storage pest management so in future if you have any doubt you can very well contact me for the devices you can contact dr mohan so thank you for the opportunity so if you have any doubt you can uh, clarify thank you so much ma'am for taking your time off and uh, sharing such valuable input with us for the next technical talk i would like to invite dr s solokshana retired associate professor nifran panchavur to provide us with insights on the topic of quality parameters for different rice varieties madam has acquired a doctorate degree in food engineering from the anamalai university having more than 3 decades of research experience in the field of grain processing and value addition she has published numerous research publications on rice quality assessment prediction of different type of farmable rice and cured the rice and value addition technology her research project on quality profile of indian rice varieties profiled the quality parameter of 400 rice varieties across india and published as reference books and book chapters she has coordinated pan indian trial milling for food corporation of india madam has won many awards and accolades including icar Team Research Award and the International Food Conference Econ Award in 2003. We welcome you, ma'am, to this webinar. I am Dr. Slochna, retired professor of Nistam. Very good morning to the participants. Today, I would like to present on quality parameters for different rice varieties and rice-based value-added products. First of all, I would like to thank our director, Dr. Yam Lohanathan. For giving me this book, but let us see what is rice. We all know rice has the husk cover, the outermost cover, which occupies 18 to 26 percent, and inner side it is the brown rice, which is having the bran layer 7 to 10 percent, and the inner portion is the spherical, which we obtain as milled rice after milling. We have different rice varieties having different origins. Shapes and sizes, colors, scented varieties, especially basmati rice is very famous for for this. It is called the prince of rice. Next to basmati rice, we have the jasmine rice. It fetches the next stage for basmati rice, but the fragrance is slightly better. It fetches. Better value than basmati rice internationally. What are the nearing and within the problem I can break among other problems. Then there are other varieties like the non-basmati rice that which has aroma. In the northwestern zone we have many varieties like Kesar, Bala, Bala Badal and others. Similarly we have in the northeastern zone. Palanamak, Basra Prabog, Gopal Govind Bog and other varieties. And similarly in the central zone also we have many varieties. And in the peninsula zone that is in the southern part of the country we have Amritsari, Jirakasamba and Gandhakasala which are very much preferred in this area. We have varieties of different texture and taste. When it cooks moist, it is tasty rice. There are rice which cook fluffy and individually it appears. There are many traditional varieties which cook to different taste and texture. Similarly, we have different types of rice available based on the processing. That's raw rice, parboiled rice, raw rice, or steamed rice, or shallow rice. 
and there are other types of rice available like gamma rice, free cooking rice, plain rice, enriched rice, and fortified rice. And here we can see the picture of white rice, cooked raw rice, pure raw rice, and parboiled raw rice. You can see the difference of cooking. Similarly, you can see the salama cooking, uncooked and cooked rice. And the green is gamma rice, that is gamma amino butyric acid is more in this rice and it is very good for our health. You can see the quick cooking rice. Similarly, the cane rice, enriched rice are also available in the market. And now, so far, we have seen different types of rice in the world, in the last country. So, which rice is the best? Can you say it's very difficult to tell because the rice preferred by one ethnic group is not preferred by the other group. So, it is very difficult to tell which grain is good, which quality is good. We can never say. Now, similarly, you can see that long grain, aromatic basmati, is preferred in northwestern. Medium and short grain, non aromatic and aromatic, are preferred in the eastern zone. Low amino sticky rice is preferred in the northeastern. And medium and long slender parboiled white and red rice is preferred in the southern zone of the country. Here you can see the different important parameters of quality. The milling quality, physical properties, chemical properties, physical chemical properties, cooking quality, viscographic properties, nutritive quality. In this, it's very important are the milling quality and the cooking quality. Milling quality, here you can see the paddy, it's a brand layer like the white rice inside. So, the hot content is varying from 18 to 26 percent, bran is varying from 4 to 7 percent, and hence ultimately the oil price varies from 68 to 75 percent. So, from paddy, we are getting the brown rice, from brown rice, we are getting the polished rice and bran, and during the process of milling, we are getting broken and no. So, these are the important aspects of the milling quality. The half content, Brand content, the quality of paddy, the paddy moisture, milling machinery, the experience of the mill operator, the humidity of the surrounding, and similarly the size of the grain, how uniform the grains are in a lot, the depth of the grooves in size, extent of sunset, purity, hardness of the grain, the softness in the grain, and the extent of gas between brown rice and polished rice. These are the various aspects that affect the quality of rice. Here you can see that milling quality depends on the impurities present in rice, the different layers of bran present in the rice, and you can see the depth of grooves present there. You can see the chalkiness and checks in the grain. These are all the parameters that affect the quality of milling in the price. Then we can assess the quality of price by means of using these uh, equipment. We have to assess the broken to know the quality of price. Then there are different lab shellers, lab emery polishes and metal polishes for assessing the milling yield of price. There are physical parameters like length, breadth, and thickness can should be measured. Then thousand grain weight, surface area, sunset, extent of discolored grains and immature, color of brown rice, hardness, fissures, chalkiness. These parameters affect the quality of rice. So for measuring the length and breadth, we can use the wooden brood board. For thickness, we can use the dial calipers. And nowadays, a lot of brain scanners are available for this measurement. And based on the measurement of length and L is to B ratio, the varieties are divided into long slender, long bold, medium slender, short slender, and short bold. These are the classification required by the breeders. And then the Food Corporation of India was using the super fine, fine, and common varieties. And nowadays, it is only two categories, 
as grade A and common. When the LP ratio is more than 2.5, it is categorized as grade A, and when it is less than 2.5, it is common. So based on thousand grams, the grain for tiny when it is less than 12 grams, small when it is 18, 12 to 18 grams, and big when it is 18.1 to 23 grams, and giant when it is more than 23 grams. So here you can see the surface area calculation. If you know the length, breadth, and thickness, you can calculate the surface area. Smaller the grain, more is the surface area. More is the surface area. Thicker is the absorption of water. So this parameter is very useful during the processing of pipe. In order to see this context in the grain, we can use the grain crack detector. Where even the steps present in the body can be assessed. Then these are different aspects of the milk rice, the black rice, broken rice, whole grains, plastic grains, broken, which we have to analyze during rice analysis. This we have seen different colors of rice. For assessing the color of the rice, we can use the rice whiteness meter and also hunter color lab can also be used for measuring the color. For measuring the harness of the grain, we can use harness grain tester or texture analyzer. More the harness, better will be the standing capacity during milling, otherwise it breaks more. So if the paddy is having more sunset, it gives the resultant crisis with more tracks. So it tracks during cooking. If the chalkiness portion is more, then it breaks more during milling and also it has its own influence during cooking. There are some other chemical parameters like amylose, alkyl score, and gel consistency and aroma. When the grain is having the amylose content 25 to 33 percent, it is called high amylose category. The rice which is used for idli purpose for the preparation of food. Plate rice, expanded rice, and all, it falls under this category of high amylose. The rice normally which we consume as table surface rice has the intermediate amylose content from 20 to 25 percent amylose. And the other low amylose categories, we do not have much enough in southern region. And it is all present in the northeastern part of the country. So higher the amylose content, the grains are more individual, and lower the amylose content, it becomes more tasty during cooking. This is alkali score. We have to prepare the alkali at 1.4 percentage concentration, and if we add the grains in this, it disintegrates in different patterns. Then regarding cooking quality. The cooked rice volume, elongation, gruel love, optimal cooking time, taste and texture are very important. When the cooked rice volume is more than 425 ml for 100 gram, then it's called very good quality of rice. If it is less than 350, then it is poor. So here you can see the difference between the fresh rice and the old rice. Let us say I have taken 150 gram for cooking and it has given three cups of rice. So I am using 150 gram. I have consumed all 150 gram. But the same rice, if you cook after six months or nine months, it gives five volumes of rice, five cups of rice. So here each cup represents 30 gram. So with this third, one, two, three cups with 90 grams, of rice, I have finished my lunch. Here, sambar, rasam, and curd. So, I have finished my lunch. So, instead of 150 gram, I can take only 90 gram of rice and finish my lunch. So, if any sugar patients are present in your house, or if you want to reduce your rice consumption, quantity of rice, then better you purchase the old rice. Next is the length of the rice. We all like the lengthy rice. So in order to check the length, 
the length of cook rice to length of uncooked rice is measured. So if the rice is expanding more than twice, then it is very good. Like basmati, jeera basamba all ex expand very well. And if you want to see the slenderness of the grain after cooking, then you have to consider the breadth also. So L is to B of cooked rice divided by L is to B of uncooked rice. So optimal cooking time is very important to know how long it will take for cooking. Raw rice takes 13 to 18 minutes and parboiled rice takes normally up to 28 minutes in open cooking. And if it is carrier rice, it takes even 60 minutes or 90 minutes for completion of cooking. Then regarding gruel loss, if it is fresh rice, it gives 9 to 12% of gruel loss. And the aged rice, it gives only 2 to 3% of gruel loss. And taste and texture, we have to see the taste by means of uh, uh, tasting it. And regarding texture, it is better you take the known quantity of sample and use the texture analyzer where the compression is given over the cooked rice and the force required is measured. So here for the variety BL done, the force required is 3,790 and the stiffness for this variety is minus 137. So if we want to compare number of varieties like 50 or 100 varieties, this method is very convenient. Then discographic property is also very important. So if you want to test different varieties, to give different properties for, or to make different products, we can select specific varieties using this technique. This is stable perfect rice where the peak viscosity has ranged from about 500 to 2500 for about 20 varieties collected in the market. Here, nutritional value you can see the germ and brand it is very rich in phytochemicals very rich in b vitamins it has fiber fiber, fiber content whereas if you take the vendor form the starch is high and it has lesser b vitamin so it is always better to consume rice as brown rice if we see the products from rice there are many traditional products like fake rice, expanded rice, popped rice, rice padam, idlis, dosa, rice poppers, rice vermicelli, rice murku, and rice putu. So, for preparing the flake rice, steeping is done for about 10 hours. Water is drained, and the roasted paddy is flaked in edge runners. Here you can see the flake rice of different uh, thickness. This is the edge runner where the paddy is flaked. And if you want to flake to so much of thin flakes, then you have to flake it in the roller flaking machine. Here you can see different thickness of the flakes. More the thinness, then the yield will be less. Expanded rice. Here we have to soak the paddy in hot water and the well, mill, well milled rice is used for expanding the rice. The salted expanded rice, milled rice is put in the roaster and the puffing is obtained here in this roaster. So after cooling, it is packed here. And uh, this is popped rice. When the husk is intact, then it is roasted and the resultant popped rice is here. It is similar to popcorn. And we can prepare idlis from brown rice. And uh, this is string hopper, where the wet milk rice is roasted in woolly type of roaster. Then salt solution is added and extruded. We can get this string hopper. And we can prepare kutu from different traditional varieties. And here you can see some traditional varieties like Karunguru wine, which has given the best uh, soft kutus. Then we can prepare the extruded products by using the 
of the making machine we can get extruded product from well milled rice or we can even use the brown rice powder powder for obtaining the brown rice vermicelli and rice bran we can use the stabilized rice bran as our food and also we can incorporate this bran into wrappings muffins and other extruded pro products we can add bran in cookies in other extruded products and also we can prepare frayums so ultimately what i would suggest is it is better you gradually shift from bulk rice consumption to brown rice consumption which is very good for our health and these are murals in the field using the black plants green plants and white plants different pigmented plants we can prepare this mural this will also invite lot of foreigners to our country generating lot of income to us so i wish uh, all the best and uh, thank you a lot for listening so far and what uh, doubt you have thanks a lot for listening we we'll proceed to the next technical talk which is on plant layout and machinery for micro level processing of rice for this session we have with us dr kp sudeep head rapta agri business incubator agricultural university sir got a doctorate degree agricultural engineering from iar in new delhi and post doctorate from ku leuven belgium he is presently heading the department of agricultural engineering Rattar Agri Business Incubator and Center of Excellence in Pulse Service Technology at College of Agriculture Thrissur KAU. Post credit sir has around 330 research publications, six textbooks and several bulletins in the field of pulse service technology. Sir is the recipient of several prestigious fellowships for international training including the Norman E Borlaug fellowship by the United States Department of Agriculture, Nofit fellowship from Netherlands, VLIR UDC fellowship from Belgium. Sinatco fellowship from Israel and Erasmus fellowship from Sweden too. Recently, he has also received the Best Teacher Award in Agricultural Higher Education of Kerala Agricultural University, Commendation of Medal, and the Best Reviewer Award of Indian Society of Agricultural Engineers, New Delhi. We welcome you, sir, to this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Nifty Mtanjavu, for giving me this opportunity to share. Uh, our views, uh, especially on this uh, small plant layout, and also especially the uh, small scale machinery requirement for the uh, microprocessing units, especially on rice based products. So, Neftam Tanjavur is, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, part of this uh, PMFM scheme and uh, doing great job to uh, uh, foster the entrepreneurship sector. in the food processing sector all together and especially in the grains also because today is our thrust area as for the rice processing sector so as we all know uh, the micro processing set segment is one of the major contributor to our indian economy and uh, also the msme sector is contributing nearly 40% of the export sector so we need to um, uh you know strengthen this uh, msme sector especially those especially uh, msme sector working uh on rice processing because today's topic is rice processing so uh, we are bound to stick to the topic on rice processing and one of the major uh, crop uh, india is producing and uh, apeda is also promoting actually uh, the rice uh, products uh, from our country especially from kerala and means from the northeast and you know uh, we are also focusing for the uh, specialty rice is also for the exports okay uh, uh, specialty rice means uh, you know uh, our basmati uh, rice and then our jeera kashala ganda kashala we have in a black rice we have uh, some uh, specialty rice so as such 
the processed products also we are promoting the export from our country and of course we are uh, one of the major contributor towards the export of this one so what does how the msme sector or the small segment microprocessing segment can contribute to contribute or to encourage uh, new entrepreneurs into the food processing spec uh, sector especially in the rice based processing sector government has uh, uh, developed uh, has come up with many uh, schemes and the pmfme scheme is one of the major uh, scheme for that one especially for those on the rice sector to promote uh, because rice is the one district one product program for many of the uh, districts in our country and at the same time now there is no such restriction we can work on many other products and uh, in rice especially we have n number of products and uh, as i mentioned just simply converting the paddy into rice that is one of the major product and my previous speakers actually i could not listen to most of the speakers but still i of course i uh, i was there for the previous speaker and uh, madam covered most of the value added products including ready to eat and ready to cook products then uh, puffed rice then flaked rice okay pork rice so people are looking for the convenient food nowadays okay means whether ready to eat or ready to cook products whether from the grains or millets whatever it may be so again the focus we should not dilute from the <laughs> focus of the topic today that is uh, rice so rice is being one of the major crop so we can promote many or we can bring many of the potential entrepreneurs of the msme sector uh, or the kudumbasri units or the sg group uh, to start ventures in the rice primary processing or secondary or tertiary processing so that is one of the major agenda behind the pmfme scheme so in under pmfme scheme what are the scope for this uh, micro food processing segment so that is what should be the layout and what are the machinery is required to start the rice milling industry because you know the value added products of course the major equipments are already covered by the uh, previous speaker like a puffing machine then uh, pasta making extrusion machine so it is all covered uh, uh, then my uh, area is actually what are the equipments required for the small segment like microprocessing segment sector uh, to start new small scale rice processing machinery okay and also the layout the layout system because you know when we are talking about the layout in the uh, food industry uh, there are uh, different types of layouts okay that means we are not going to the layouts system for the big manufacturing units like uh, product layout uh, process layout uh, you know uh, then fixed layout many layout systems are there but we will be focusing only the straight processing line or the product layout system which is commonly adopted in the case of rice processing because you know this is not the place to give you more theoretical oriented things for the micro process things that meant which actually required the in the in the what is required in the rice milling that is only we are going to cover it how the equipments what are the equipments required for the small scale rice processing and how it has to be arranged in the food industry to get maximum output okay maximum volume or ma maximum capacity how to improve the capacity of the existing plant and also how to uh, 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 reduce the cost of the operation and how to reduce the effort okay that is also very important minimizing the uh, uh, how effectively we can judicious utilization of the skilled and unskilled workers in a rice milling and uh, uh, also uh, you know uh, the energy reduction management and how we can reduce the ma uh, machine movement uh, restrict that one or how make it uh, more uh, uh, effortless operation so that is what which meant by the layout system okay for definitely for the food industry management students and all they will be learn to listen to many other processing layout that systems and all now nowadays new uh, systems are the uh, uh, computer based programs are also available for making the layout so that is not the agenda for this micro food processing segment okay our agenda is restricting to the micro food processing units especially the small scale rice milling units and how we can start a new small scale rice milling units especially for the 
സ്മോൾ വുമൺ ഗ്രൂപ്പ്സ് ഓക്കെ ഓർ സ്മോൾ എസ് എസ് ജി ഗ്രൂപ്പ്സ് ഓർ കുടുംബശ്രീ ഗ്രൂപ്പ്സ് സോ ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ദ അജണ്ട ഓഫ് ദിസ് സെഷൻ ദ സ്മോൾ സെഷൻ ഫോർ ട്വന്റി മിനിറ്റ്സ് വിച്ച് ഐ എം ഗോയിങ് ടു സ്പീക്ക് ഓൺ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ സ്മോൾ സെക്ടർ മെഷീനറീസ് വിച്ച് വി ക്യാൻ യൂസ് ഇറ്റ് സോ ലെറ്റ് മീ ഷെയർ മൈ പ്രസന്റേഷൻ സ്ലൈഡ് Uh, is it uh, visible yes, hey mom dr sinija whether it is visible my slides are over yes, it is visible sir are my vis- slides are visible yes, sir it is visible visible okay thank you so <coughs> so i will be covering the uh, the simple layout system and also you know the some of the machinery small scale machinery which is required for the uh, uh, micro food processing segment under this one so uh, as it was introduced uh, by dr skip sudhi uh, working as professor and head of the agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university and you can contact me uh, on email rabi@au.in and my line number is also given and the mobile whatsapp number is also uh, given and those who want you can uh, uh, note down this uh, details and of course i will at the end also i will mention this uh, point so in rice processing in rice processing uh, you know the can uh, what is meant by this rice mill mainly uh converting this paddy into the milled rice okay and uh, this by removing the husk and bran and the percentage of the husk and what is the percentage of the endosperm then the bran layer the uh, everything actually we have already uh uh listened in the previous uh, uh, speaker presentation so this is the process actually what we have to do so under uh, uh pm of me scheme actually for the individuals we are giving up to 10 lakhs grant and for the groups actually we are giving 35 percentage of the total project cost to, to start the uh, micro processing segment okay and then you may think that uh, uh, from where we will get the balance okay the scheme is giving only 35 percentage but you know more than 35 percentage now agri infrastructure fund is also available to start a rice milling because that is including in the primary processing center so the interest rate at an interest rate of 5 percentage you can get avail even loan up to 5 means up to 2 crores for individual projects okay so with uh, this uh, convergence of the pm fme scheme and uh, uh, our agri infrastructure fund loan actually now you can easily start a rice milling unit uh, uh, with a small scale rice milling unit up to two crores okay up to two crores means uh, uh, with a uh, you can have a capacity of the plant roughly uh, one ton or uh, one ton per hour or one point even up to uh, two tons per hour capacity uh, rice mill definitely you can start with uh, two crores project so okay that is in in nutshell okay so now we will move on to the machinery which is required okay for the in the rice milling so in the rice mill as i mentioned in rice milling process means actually it is the conversion of the paddy into rice so in the rice uh, if when during this conversion actually what we require is the removal of the husk and removal of the bran so nowadays actually we can uh, without removing the bran also Uh, we can produce healthy because whole grain concept is uh, encouraging where people are look, going for whole grain concept okay whole grain consumption so including the bran we are consuming because you know highly rich in fiber and nutrients and vitamins the bran is actually uh, embedded with the uh, uh, fiber actually fiber as well as uh, uh, our uh, nutrients so to uh, consume this one actually the whole grain concept uh, uh, not only in the case of rice in most of the uh, grains actually we are promoting even the fruits also now entire consumption of the entire fruit or uh, entire grain is actually we are promoting and in that case actually the whole bran the rice with whole 
uh, full brand is actually uh, many uh, industries are coming up with that one. And actually the storage and the packaging is very important in that case because the oil content, we all know the oil content will be pretty high in the case of whole brand rice and the packaging is very important. I will discuss those things later on. So then partially removal, removed grain uh, or brand can be used because you know, with the, by retaining uh, some amount of brand, that is another uh, uh, major uh, uh, product actually which is coming up because you know to encourage the rice with bran. Then completely polished silky polished rice is also available which is actually the glycemic index is pretty high and also it is an unhealthy product okay. So we are actually discouraging such uh, over polished rice now but still consumers actually they prefer the silky rice okay the sortex silky rice sortex there is no issue with the sortex rice but you know if the polishing level is going beyond a level to get the fully but that's actually a bit uh, unhealthy and also you know uh, uh, pro diabetic because you know, uh, the glycemic index will be comparatively high and that is why we are encouraging the whole grain rice okay so that type of products is also one of the uh, area and by this actually what we are saving is actually the energy in any rice mill actually one of the major energy consumption unit operation is actually polishing okay we are coming to that one so by reducing this uh, by encouraging the whole grain concept the by encouraging the whole bran rice actually we are saving energy by reducing the uh, polishing operations in the rice mills okay so this is actually the process plan okay this is a flow chart of any modern typical rice mill as i mentioned again in rice mill means a removal of the husk okay removal of husk and bran we are actually removing and the unit operations involved in a major, major, major uh, rice mill is actually cleaning then parboiling, of course, parboiling is an optional unit operation. Okay, it is not compulsory. That means, uh, especially in the North Indian uh, situation, actually, we are not uh, using the parboiling. Only South Indian belt, actually, we are using the parboiling. And um, uh, so, uh, the cleaned paddy, uh, we will be uh, uh, parboiled. So, so, parboiling itself, actually, it is a hydrothermal treatment. There are soaking, steaming and drying process involved in the parboiling. We will explain those things later. And also, the machinery is involved in those uh, processes. We will discuss it later. And first, after parboiling, then the dried paddy will then we will be dehusking. So whether it is raw paddy or parboiled paddy, after drying, we will be dehusking. Okay, for dehusking, the moisture content of the paddy usually we will keep it at 14 percentage. Okay, that is very important to enhance the recovery or to removal of the husking and to retain the whole endosperm, the whole grain uh, recovery of the head rise recovery. Actually, we request uh, required an optimum moisture content of the paddy as 14 percentage. Then, after dehusking. For dehusking, of course, there are many machineries. We will be discussing all the machineries later on, like uh, huller, huller to sheller, rubber roll sheller, centrifugal sheller. Different machineries are there. And the agenda of means whatever the equipments we are using, the main agenda is actually removal of the husk and separation of the whole bran, and then means uh, uh, bran rice, and then we will be removing. The, because you know, hundred percent day separation of the paddy and husk and pad, uh, endosperm is not possible by using any of this machinery. So we need a paddy separator. Okay, to paddy separator, what separate paddy separator will do? It will separate the uh, dehusked paddy and the paddy. Okay, and the paddy will again go back to the husking zone or the rubber or sheller or the sheller shelling zone, and the whole uh, the shelled paddy will go to the polishing section. And in the polishing session, what we are doing, we will remove the that brown layer. We will remove that means the bran we will be removing. And this depends sometimes if we are without polisher, we can go to the whole grain, uh, means full bran rice. And partially we can remove the degree of milling. We can just adjust based on the polishing sector. Uh, we can retain part, partial amount of bran, okay, and then complete removal of the bran is also possible. And so thus that thing will be done by the polisher. Different type of polishers are the horizontal polisher, vertical polisher, means uh, abrasive polisher, many polishers are available. And uh, uh, 
the vertical cone polisher, of course, which is obsolete now because no one is using the vertical cone polishers, but still we were using such a polisher machine and then we'll go to the grading because after polishing operation we are actually uh, with the friction actually we are uh, abrasive action we are uh, for removing the brand at that time many endos means full grain there will be some broken also during this process so there will be different broken size as it was discussed by the my previous speaker and then the broken the, we need to separate it based on the commercial grade okay that means small pieces then middle medium pieces and also the full grain uh, rice we will be separating by using the rice graders and then okay we have one more actually system that means sortex rice if we are promoting sortex rice then actually there will be a color sorter that is inevitable and the color sorter will actually remove the black rice okay or discolored rice from the main lot so this is the usual uh, procedure that means and after that weighing and bag system we can bag it in 10 kg bag or 50 kg bag so whatever the rice mill especially you know there will be a clear demarcation okay again what is this clear demarcation means when the paddy is with the, the husk okay uh, we need we don't require a very uh, um, hygienic style or uh, you know cleaned floor and all or full uh, uh, the, the rice okay brown rice and the on is actually that will be in a fully enclosed area where actually the walls will be the perfect walls will be there and then you know the uh, ventilation and the ventilation will be needed all these things just like the perfect, the perfect processing industry starts actually after the parboiled uh, 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 process will enter into the building zone. So that is the machineries of the building zone actually you can see from one end to the other end out. So the parboiling section like uh, the initial uh, scalping then cleaning that magnetic uh, stone separator or you know stone separator and the magnetic iron particles. So those elements or those machineries will be separated and the parboiling tank okay so steaming soaking and then LSU dryer this many equipments usually it will be kept outside the main processing hall and starting from the shelling zone onwards it will be up to the color sorter it will be arranged in a straight line layout so what is this layout? the usual layout uh, is a product layout okay we can say it is a product layout which is usually arranged in the rice milling plant so this that is why i am not going to mention about the other uh, layout system because no as uh, the different layout systems are there for the rice process, processing industries like or any manufacturing product like functional layout process layouts then you know uh, 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 fixed layouts and all but we are focusing because rice milling mainly it will be a plant layout that means it is the uh, product layout that means it's mainly for one product okay so if we are using a straight line processing layout we are using okay that that is the product layout so why we are making such a plan in any processing industry as i mentioned it is mainly to extract the best from the workers and by reducing the energy and to enhance the capacity of the entire processing plant by the uh, uh, arrangement of the processing plant and how to arrange this one as I mentioned, it uh, uh, it will effort, the arrangement should be such a way that it should reduce the effort of the workers, okay? And who is handling the machines and also the machinery material movement should be very less, okay? So we can harvest the best, okay, from the uh, from the processing uh, from the processing line. The, so the effort should be less and the cost of handling should be less and the spoilage should be less, okay? And also it should eliminate the congestion or accidents in the processing line. So that, all these are the positive uh, uh, usage for or you need to plan effectively before starting an industry. So this layout is very important in what way we should arrange it and by reducing the material movement, man movement and effective uh, 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 ways to reduce the spoilage of the products and in which we can enhance the capacity of the existing plant. What should be the uh, arrangement to get the maximum yield of this uh, particular product from this uh, process line. So that is why we are giving a 
good plans layout so this is actually usually a straight method that's what i have shown in the previous one you can see a straight arrangement is done that means the uh, dehusking zone then after removing the husk then bran layer whitener then uh, rice grader then polisher uh, uh, polisher then uh, grader and then color sorter and after that the weighing balance so it is arranged in a uh, series of operation and in a straight line methods and with the minimum movement of the uh, by utilizing the gravitational movement also the equipments are arranged so how what this we will see the equipments now uh, in uh, one by one okay first equipment is actually the removing of the uh, rice cleaner which is used for removing the impurities and the stone pieces okay this toner and magnetic separator is used to get the clean paddy and in the actually we will use different uh, screen size we will be using the forced air for removing the uh, unfilled grains then uh, chaff material then powder material and we will get the good quality paddy for the processing or the parboiling section okay now next is the parboiling and in the parboiling method actually we were, we are using the hydrothermal treatment and in hydrothermal treatment actually it is to uh, enhance the uh, whole grain okay we will be using the steaming soaking in water in because uh, mainly we are using most of the rice milling we are using the safety ri method actually which is uh, soaking for three to three and a half hours at uh, 70 to 80 degrees centigrade because in hot water actually we are uh, putting the uh, paddy and then uh, uh, the temperature will reduce to around 70 degrees centigrade initially the water will be around 80 to 85 degrees centigrade and then when we are pouring the paddy into the hot water it will reduce the temperature to 70 degrees centigrade and then keeping it in that temperature and soak the hot water around three to three and a half hours and then we will uh, you know steam it and then after steaming the steaming will continue till actually the uh, there will be a split on the surface every i think those who are listening to this one most of them are aware about the what is bar boiling i don't want to explain but after power boiling, the moisture content will be around 45 to 50 percentage and from this 45 to 50 percentage we have to draw down this uh, moisture content to 14 percent as i mentioned for milling the most uh, comfortable uh, moisture content for the enhancing the yield is uh, 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 to enhance the uh, 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 endos means uh, head rise yield is actually the moisture content is 14 percent so the drying is very very important how to reduce the moisture content from this 45 percentage to 50 percentage to 14 percentage can we do it in a single stretch because we can reduce the moisture content from 50 percentage to 15 percentage or 40 percentage in a single Structure, so we can do it, but thing is that the brokens will be very high. So we can do it, but thing is that brokens will be very high. Okay, dryer utilized in the rice milling industry is Louisiana State University dryer. So that is in the uh, uh, traditionally we are using the household small this uh, kerosene tanks. Also, we can convert into the form of the uh, parboiling tank. But uh, in the industry, actually, we are using the uh, parboiling tanks. The typical rice uh, parboiling tank. You can see this one, uh, the boiler. For soaking and steaming, we are using the tank, and after that, the drained paddy is uh, converted into the dryer. And in the dryer, you can see the paddy is going to, at the top, and it is actually fell, uh, fed from the top to bottom. And the hot air will be passed just across this one, and the paddy will be uh, fall from the top to the bottom. And this will be recycled two or three times after keeping it for a long uh, bit in between a tempering bin is also provided at the top so why we are doing this one okay that's very important because the very crucial thing this uh, tempering or the drying process you know this uh, uh, the, uh, because the moisture content is very important as the, you know the, how the moisture of the paddy is moving because the harvested paddy will contain usually 20 to 28 25 percent moisture content and the optimum moisture content for the shelling is actually 14 percentage and for long storage storage we have to keep it to 14 12 percentage and this process of reducing because you know, in parboiling as i mentioned the moisture content of the parboiled paddy will be around 40 45 to 50 percentage from this 45 to 50 percentage again we have to reduce the moisture content to 14 percentage so this process this process is known as reducing the moisture content from 45 to uh, or 50 to 12 uh, means 14 percentage moisture content 
we have to do in a in one or two or three passes okay and that process is known as tempering process and the temperature of drying is usually 60 to 70 percentage and the dryer usually used is lsu dryer and this is a typical dryer that means louisiana state university dryer and which is the university in the united states states of america and this tempering process is very important as i mentioned if you are doing it in a single stretch at a fast drying there will be broken okay you can see you know if you are doing at a faster rate you can see uh, the internal cracks will be developed in the rice because of the fast movement because there will be a gradation of the moisture migration My moisture you know internal moisture will be retained this one and outer moisture will be removed so this uh, moisture migrate gradient will make cracks between the grains and that is why internal cracks will be there and this will not be visible initially but during the milling process the number of broken will be very high so to avoid this one what we have to do after one passage we have to keep it for some time and during this rest period actually the internal core moisture also will be spread uniformly within the grain and then we will further dry and again we will keep it for some time and we will further dry and the cracks internal cracks development will be very low and the grains will be uh, we will get maximum head dry seal. So this is the tempering process is actually the drying process is actually the major factor which uh, actually which deals with the uh, uh, enhancing the grain yield okay the moisture content is important and how to reduce the moisture content from this after the parboiling is also very important so that equipments and its operators are well versed with this one the operation process and also the equipments and machineries is very important to enhance the yield so in rice hulling the parboiled dried paddy from 14 percentage moisture content we will enter into the hulling zone and in hulling we will removing the husk and you will get the clean brown rice after removal of the husk so that is what for hulling there are different type of machinery like hullers battery of hullers okay then sheller come hulller sheller cone pol come pol cone polisher then modern rice mill so now these hullers are already replaced earlier these hullers uh, uh engelberg huller was used engelberg is a place in switzerland so this was used earlier but nowadays no hull is used the uh, uh, engelberg huller okay the huller has been almost replaced but still some hullers are used in i mean the rural areas where the hull husk as well as bran is removed in a single stretch and that the brokens will be pretty high by using this huller and sheller but this has been now completely replaced to the sheller and which is the major rubber sheller which is used is rubber roll sheller in most of the rice mill so that is what it is known as modernization of the rice mill replacing the huller with the sheller is known as the rubber roll sheller is known as the uh, modernization of rice mills so by using this one actually we can enhance the uh, grain recovery okay endosperm recovery and that is what we can see the what is the operation how it is being uh, uh, working or principle of a rubber roll sheller between the two rubber rolls actually we are feeding the pa paddy and we are we are the husk is being separated and we are getting the brown rice after this one but in huller we can remove the husk as well as the uh, bran and a single stretch but the problem is that we will not get the bran separately okay husk separately we will not get so we cannot effectively utilize this bran for the bran uh, byproducts okay it is not possible so because it's always with the husk so in this case actually we will get the perfect perfectly the husk is separated and the bran is separated in a different zones and therefore we can effectively utilize this bran for bran oil or as well as for biscuit manufacturing or any other products which uh, the brand can be utilized that can be done so in the rubber roll sheller the two roll, rubber rolls are running in opposite direction and because of the shearing action we are actually separating the paddy and after this uh, brand as a paddy is being separated we will be separating into the paddy separator in paddy separator we will be separating the brown rice as well as the paddy separately and the paddy will go back to, to the dehusking zone and we will get the again we will uh, it will come to the paddy separator so the uh, now you know we have removed the husk we have removed the uh, we have separated the uh, uh, unhusked paddy and the uh, husked paddy by using the separator and then it will go to the polishing zone now what we have to remove we have to remove the bran only so as i mentioned 
we can now use the paddy after from the paddy separator as such if you want full brand rice we can pack it as such okay now if you want a specific grades like uh, with the uh, 50% brand removal with the uh, uh, 25% brand we can remove we can adjust uh, now the polishing so that it will go to the polishing section and for that we have to remove the brand in different layers and now you can see that one this different brand layer uh, can be removed by using different polishers like vertical cone polisher this we are not using most of the modern rice mints are not using this one but we are using the horizontal polishers and vertical polishers okay now this uh, polisher as i mentioned this is one of the major energy consuming equipment with any processing line okay because no we are giving money and we are producing a uh, unhealthy product okay so we should promote actually uh, the whole grain concept and we should promote the full brand rice or at least at least partially uh, polished rice partial removed rice not uh, we should not promote the silky use of silky sort of uh, uh, silky rice okay uh, which is uh, high in glycemic index and all so after uh, removal of this uh, uh, polishing operation because of the abrasive action the grain size actually there will be some broken also you can see the different brokens, the full grain rice and the brokens, and we need to separate the brokens for the market value or the commercial value. We need to grade it, and for that actually we can use different graders, single graders, double graders. Many graders are available, and in which actually we will get the polished uh, uh, rice. And after that, there can be some black rice also within the endosperm rice means uh, head rice right uh, head rice so along with that one we need to we can if it is a sortex rice we need to remove the black rice okay if you want to claim it as a sortex rice for exporting and all we need to remove the black rice and for that actually we can to use a color sorter and different uh, manufacturer means color sorters are available and this color sorter it will separate uh, we will accept one color which is required for us okay sometimes the required color may be uh, red color sometimes the required color may be the white color sometimes the required color may be the off white color so whatever is the required color that will come in one outlet and the sensors will be calibrated accordingly and whatever is uh, uh, the other things that means the entire things which is not required uh, or which is not calibrated to our sensors that will be rejected okay that will be come in another line so different num uh, brands are available uh, and uh, uh, color sorter one color sorter itself will cost you around 25 lakhs to 30 lakhs in a modern rice mill so if it is your choice whether the microprocessing center whether we need to start a sortex rice or a color sorter has to be installed initially or not uh, we can we can install the color sorter at a later stage also okay because now we can uh, we can start with a mini rice mill units with uh, uh, the entire you know we can use it a uh, uh, entire processing can be done within a small unit which is shown here uh, like uh, which can be uh, with uh, less than 2 lakhs rupees we can get it such a mini rice mill okay or uh, we can we can go uh, depending upon your uh, money whether we can do the uh, uh, dehusking separately and polishing separately in another unit and such units the second one we can uh, get it uh, at a cost of 10 lakhs okay so similarly the rice mills now uh, even the hullers some hullers are available from even even 40000 uh, mini rice mill uh, uh, 40 uh, is available for even for 40000 rupees okay uh, so it all depends what is your scale and what is your requirement so uh, starting from 40000 mini rice mill to uh, 2 lakhs rice mill to less than 10 lakhs uh, up to 15 lakhs rice mill up to 1 crore rice mill up to 5 crores rice mill so it all depends upon your uh, investment and your inputs and for that uh, actually mini rice mills with different capacities are available even mobile rice mills are available which uh, with the tractor pto shaft uh, the power can be used and uh, uh, the uh, tractor can be utilized in the off seasons also for uh, using the rice mill but you know of course parboiling is not possible you may ask whether you can do the parboiling or not no. We can use the 
um, you have to uh, use the the feed should be with the paddy with the uh, 14 percentage moisture content so the parboiling has to be done separately the dryers has to be done separately the dried paddy with the 14 percentage moisture content if you are feeding definitely you will get the uh, polished rice okay from this one so this is the rubber roll shell is also available then the horse on the polisher is also available and finally you will get the polished rice so such mini rice mills are available then uh, completely the plan lay uh, the layout i have shown the straight line layout with the mesh separate machineries for the uh, uh, polisher the removal of the stones magnet removal of the iron particles then removal of the bran uh, so removal of the husk removal of the bran then separate paddy separator then the polishers then uh, graders then color sorter weighing and uh, weighing uh, uh, and uh, uh, equipments so and Entire machineries can be arranged in a straight line fashion, and by arranging this one in a straight line uh, layout, actually, uh, we the material movement is very easy. We are using the gravitational force uh, for uh, utilizing the grain movement. So uh, that way, actually, we can uh, easy the uh, material movement and the workers movement, uh, and uh, the future expansion of the rice mill is also possible if we are utilizing. I think that uh, we are arranging the equipment in one line. Then, as earlier I mentioned, the rice, the whole grain concept also we are giving importance, and we can use the entire rice brand rice also. We can use it, and you know this is one of the typical many many uh, micros uh, woman self well group. Actually, they are working with the full. bran rice you can see that is uh, packed you know one of the major problem with associated with the full bran rice is actually its uh, low shelf life because you know the entire uh, uh, bran is available and the entire bran you know the rice bran oil is a bit high and therefore the uh, activity the enzyme activity will be very high and therefore it has to be packed perfectly so vacuum packing is very advice means it's advisable for such a whole grain Uh, rice and uh, you can see the woman group actually which is doing the uh, whole grain uh, the full brand rice in vacuum packed and you can just see the level style of packaging and by which we can extend the shelf life of the uh, whole brand rice also you can see similarly the vacuum packaging machine can be used for such uh, brand packing and rice packaging with the whole grain whether it is black rice or jeera kachala or you know the uh, 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 many shali varieties, uh, rakta shali rice varieties, uh, many rice varieties along with the bran we can use it. Matta rice, speciality rice we can use it. So the whole bran rice or pack can be packed effectively to enhance the shelf life of the full bran rice. So these are some of the opportunities which uh, with the mini rice mill because I am just mentioning only about the rice milling process and to promote such rice mills and uh, rice bran uh, products which the previous speaker was mentioned we have a uh, agri business incubation center just like at niftam tanjavur has got a uh, agri business incubation center those who are from kerala those who are listening to this one from kerala side definitely agri business incubation center is uh, with all the mini rice milling unit all the processed products like the rice bran flakes extruded products pastas noodles uh, baking baking line everything is available with agri business incubation center so those who are listening this uh, 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 webinar they can uh, move to those who are approachable to agri business incubation center at uh, niftam tanjavur they can go there and those who are from kerala definitely you can come to agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university also and i will give you the contact number again and for various value added products uh, like uh, uh, you know puttu powder uh, Uh, puttu powder steamed puttu powder the novel puttu powder in which actually we are actually using the one glass uh, rice powder actually with one glass of water that is one of the advertisement of one of the major brand of kerala so you know uh, most of the rice uh, puttu powder actually it is made with now the steamed puttu powder so we have a puttu powder making unit uh, we have a modern rice milling unit line with us we have a rice flaking machine extruded products the uh, pastas and noodles and biscuit line so all such products are available so if any of you are interested to uh, get a practical exposure on this products uh, definitely you are most welcome to agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university also we also promote under the pm from pm of ms scheme uh, uh, we have a common agri business incubation uh, common facilitation center established at agri business incubation center at kerala agriculture university headquarters at trishur so under this uh, with the funding of uh, ministry of food processing 
a uh, common facility uh, common facilitation center or common incubation facility is established at the thrissur you are most welcome to utilize this facility so with this actually i thank niftam thanjavur and also the organizers for giving me an opportunity of uh, how uh, agri business incubation center or how the pmfme scheme is actually facilitating the micro food processing segments uh, uh, in our country and especially how the niftam tanjavur and how kerala agriculture university is helping uh, to start uh, new ventures in rice based sector okay whether it is rice processing rice milling units or it is rice processed product whether it could be pastas noodles extruded products brown rice uh, packaging whether it is uh, biscuits manufacturing whether it is health mix energy drink whatever it may be okay agri business incubation center or niftan tanjavur is with you you are always welcome to business incubation facility of kerala agriculture university or to niftan tanjavur okay you can contact us and uh, uh, through rabi at kau.in and our whatsapp number is 9740665411 you can send a message to this one and you will get a link and you can join agri business incubation center whatsapp group of uh, kerala agriculture university and uh, the land number also i am giving 0487 2438332 okay so this is our contact number so thank you once again uh, niftam tanjavur for giving us uh, giving us the opportunity to share what is happening in agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university and how the pfm pmfm scheme and ministry of food processing is supporting uh especially the micro processing segment and the financial assistance uh, through pmfm scheme and a supporting convergence scheme of uh, aif that is agri infrastructure fund scheme is also available so those who are listening to this one you are most welcome with this uh, convergence definitely we can promote the food processing industries especially with rice processing sector in our country and we can contribute uh, to the national economy and also we can promote the export from our country and which will be a boon to the farming sector of our country so thank you niftam tanjavur for giving this opportunity thank you so much sir, for such a detailed and excellent presentation on the missionaries required for the micro level processing unit i hope the participants got a clarity on those things thank you so much for joining with us sir So we will be moving on to the next technical talk on uh, export opportunities for value added rice products for this session we have with us shrimati shobhana kumar gm and regional head apura chana madam is some common mba graduate and is associated with apida since 1996 currently ma'am holds charge of regional head apida chennai to cater to the stakeholders in tamil nadu and puducherry for promotion of agri agriculture in the state she is also a member of the evaluation committee and the national program for organic production we welcome you ma'am to this webinar yeah so and uh, you know in developing entrepreneurs and uh, you know to bring them to the front uh, uh, this thing uh, so that the products can be made and taken to the secondary uh, next level of marketing and uh, as an uh, uh, you know organization and the department of commerce apida is an uh, export promotion body for agricultural and processed food products and uh, it is under department of commerce ministry of commerce and industry and uh, our mandate is to promote quality agricultural value added products from the country and uh, you know we also register members be it an uh, entrepreneur or uh, sole proprietorship or farmer producer organization or an mc as registered member of apida the registration is mainly for the uh, export purpose because uh, uh, including exports customs and other government organizations may ask for our certificate number one which is called rcms registration commitment certificate and the registered members also get the facility of providing financial assistance to us which is provided by the department of commerce and uh, you know uh, they can also participate with us in the trade fairs and other uh, fairs that are uh, organized both at the domestic and international level the export assistance members under apila pavilion under india pavilion they will get an opportunity to 
Chokis a product sun gift business linkage to the trade fairs. And for market access, market development, and promotion, also we keep taking the uh, leading exporters or the budding entrepreneurs. And we also assist them in creating and developing infrastructure uh, facilities in their unit. Also, the financial assistance is extended to the central and state government agencies. In, uh, as on it, you know, for this, for some for some time back, we have been involved in converting the farmer producer organizations FPOs as exporters. All these years, the FPOs and the farmers have been giving their products to the exporters, and they were exporting. Now it is a chance for the FPOs also to come forward and export their products directly to the other markets. And we also keep conducting programs like biosilo meets both at the domestic and international level, which is called, you know, uh, uh, market linkage also, like where the farmers can meet the exporters that is in the domestic market or where the exporters can meet the importers through the trade fairs in international markets. The products that are under our purview, which are mandated by us all, all the agricultural products, Except for tea, coffee, spices, coconut, those will not come under our mandate as there are spe uh, you know, specific separate promotion body like tea board, coffee board, spices board, coconut development board. So apart from those products, all fruits and vegetables, rice, wheat, cereals, pulses, dairy, animal products, such as uh, meat, poultry, and uh, you know, uh, groundnuts, pickles, quargum, floriculture, herbal, medicine plants, cashew, and its products all are under our mandate. But when it comes as organic, as we said, as uh, you know, in this slide also, Madam said that we are the secretariat for certifying products as organic which is mandated under another government of India's initiative, which is called as NPOP, that is National Program for Organic Production, where the stakeholders, be it a farmer or the processor or the trader, have to go through a system or a procedure which is underlined and the, under the NPOP, which, will, you know, which we will see in the subsequent slides. So under NPOP, when any product is called organic and it is exported from our country, it comes under APEDA, be it tea, coffee, spices, cotton, anything which is exported as organic that are mandated by us. So what are the major products that are exported from our country? If we see the last two years data, all these years, basmati rice and buffalo meat have been doing good on the chart, one and first and the second rank. But after this COVID, for the last three years, non-basmati rice has taken the topmost share, uh, share in the export basket of Abida's mandated products. And the value of non-basmati rice is increasing for the last three years. This is still 21-22. And we have figures till January 2023 that I will be showing in the subsequent slides. But yes, non-basmati rice is widely accepted all over the world. And other products are basmati, buffalo meat, wheat, maize, miscellaneous preparations, cereal preparations. So when we talk about value-added products of rice, that will come under cereal preparations and miscellaneous preparations and also under milk products where you export rice powder. So what is the value of export uh, rice and its value added products for the last year 21-22 is about 45,000 crores worth non-basmati rice we have exported. And the major destinations were Bangladesh, Benin, China, Nepal. In the subsequent slide, I will show you. And next is Basmati rice. Around 26,000 crores have been exported. And the major 
countries those import are Iran, Saudi, Iraq, United Arab Emirates, USA, Yemen, Republic. But wherever we are exporting, the main criteria that we have to keep in mind is the quality parameters that each and every importing country is looking at us for. So only when we meet those requirements, the product can be exported and particularly if we take rice, yes, we have to be very, very particular and clear about the importing country's requirements. Under value-added products, as I said, it comes under cereal preparation. So rice mixed with other cereals as, you know, as a product, we can call uh, breakfast cereals or uh, cookies, uh, bakery products, all those will come under cereal preparations. And in 2021-22, around 4,000 plus or nearly about 5,000 crores worth of cereal preparations we have exported, which also includes rice. Milk products, again, around 2,000 plus crores worth of uh, milk products we have exported. And the major destinations are USA, UAE, Sri Lanka, Indonesia. Okay, so what is the quantity that we have been exporting? The quantity is, of course, yes, it is increasing and the value is also increasing. As I said, basmati rice is declining, whereas the globe is looking at non-basmati rice. And also, all in, the, in the last three, four years, we have seen an increase in exports of traditional rice varieties, which comes under non-basmati rice. Though they do not have a separate HS code, HS code is the code number which describes the particular produce or product. But under non-basmati rice, we have many traditional rice varieties which are included, but they do not have a separate HS code. But uh, as per the source that we get from the exporters, many traditional non-basmati rice varieties from the countries, across the countries, have been exported to many countries for medicinal purpose particularly. So what is the scenario stage-wise if we see Andhra Pradesh ranks first in the states in exporting non-basmati rice, followed by the other states like Gujarat, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and other states. So this is the state-wise scenario which you can see and the export figures are increasing every year. So, what are all the major destinations of our non-basmati rice varieties that are exported? If we see, China is one of the major importer of our rice, non-basmati rice, followed by many countries which also include our neighbours like Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, UAE, Saudi and countries like Africa, they also uh, you know, import our uh, rice, non-basmati rice varieties and also traditional non-basmati rice varieties. So you have seen many value-added products, so I'm just adding to it. There are processed products from the uh, 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 rice, instant mixes and others. So we have seen in our local markets also like uh, Puffed rice, flaked rice, rice flakes, ready to eat, ready to cook, egg mix. But these products are also exported in a big way nowadays. And people have also started making rice wine, rice beer, fructose syrup and liquid glucose from non-basmati rice. But it is even rice bran oil is exported. So these are all the varieties you have. You must have seen many uh, slides that uh, speakers uh, uh, before me would have shown you. So idli mix, dosa mix, the chakri that we call, uh, you know, and the papar, the uh, typical aplam type, uh, and even the oil that are exported to the other countries. Ready to eat and ready to cook rice varieties are a hit nowadays. So many, uh, apart from MTR, there are many other brands also who are doing both vegetarian and non-vegetarian ready-to-eat and ready-to-cook rice varieties, which includes, you know, uh, you can call uh, biryani, 
a mutton chicken biryani also uh, you know ready to eat they are cooked and completely sealed and packed under hygienic condition and they are exported you will have to just uh, you know eat it in after uh, heating and uh, you know uh, for 5 to 10 minutes and they are also ready to cook varieties where like pongal kichdi if you take uh, you will have to just take out the mix put it in hot water everything is you know prepared you will have to just heat water add the mixture you get that ready to eat kichdi pongal varieties these are all the uh, value added rice products that are exported so the entrepreneurs here or any other stakeholder who would like to get into the uh, value added products of rice industry there is a big market outside our country even here in the domestic also there is a demand and outside also there are good demand that the products can go but there are certain requirements when we take as rice as a produce and also as ready to eat or value added products so if every country you know uh, they have separate requirements when we when it comes for a specific produce so when we take rice china has a separate requirement usa has a separate requirement they have to go through the procedure that they have given so apida along with the nppo that is called national plant protection organization under ministry of agriculture we go and certify the unit who would like to they will have to first of all apply to us stating that the exporter would like to export non basmati rice to these specific markets like china usa or even to saudi they have come up with their own requirements recently and for european union there is a separate list of testing for the pesticide so there are certain quality parameters which have to be definitely complied with when we have to export to certain countries and the requirements are given in our website apida.gov.in where you can see and get the detailed you know uh, information about exports to these specific countries what are the parameters that we have to you know basically think of the requirements like the produce has to be processed and packed in a clean and hygienically uh, controlled uh, unit or an area the packing material should be of the importing countries or the importers requirement by your specific quality packaging material that you have to use and you know uh, the mrl level maximum residue level that we say that is also given in our website the chemicals and the pesticides that we use in the fresh agriculture produce after harvest and after it is processed and sent or exported it is tested the list of labs which are recognized by apida for export purpose of specific products particular products are given in our website the products have to be tested under those labs only and have to be the the test results have to be clear of mrls the labs have to say that the products that are tested or the product that is tested for exports to that specific country meets with the mrl level that is maximum residue level which is within the limit of that particular country and the chemicals that the farmers or the producers that they use should have label claim with the central insecticide board you know cibrc under the government of india in the under their website they have given the chemicals that can be used and they which cannot be used all that are given very clearly they have to see before the uh, they use it in the agriculture produce so what is npop as i said it is a separate procedure which one has to follow when they have to export produce under as organic so it is a separate one is people follow natural agriculture practice and they call it as organic which we call as an export promotion body as 
residue uh, you know uh, less reduced residues or residue free product but when we call it as organic the procedure has to be complied with which is given under npop national program for organic production it is there in our website where we have accredited certain certification bodies the, those certification bodies ensures that the npop procedures are followed and complied by the farmers traders or processors or even the producers so the details are given in our website you can see as i said financial assistance is extended to the exporters farmer producer organizations central and state government agencies who would like to you know uh, export their products or the central central and state government agencies who would like to uh set up any infrastructure units or come up with some r and d proposals research and development proposal for any particular product we extend financial assistance schemes the current scheme is for the cycle up to 2025 26 we give schemes under three components that is export infrastructure development for quality development and for market development and in infrastructure development for setting up of post harvest facilities after harvesting any agriculture or horticulture produce if you want to handle them we give financial assistance such as pack houses reaper van you know vapor heat treatment for mangoes hot water treatment for mangoes cable car system for bananas and even for you know warehouses storage units for that also we give financial assistance assistance is given for processing facilities for addressing missing gaps when we take the value added products of any horticulture or agriculture products when you process them and for export purpose if you need any infrastructure facility any equipment to address missing gaps like under the product if uh, you want to check any uh, uh, metal or any foreign particle contamination or uh, you know uh, 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 to trace them to track them to even scan them you can have a system you can have a machinery which will be funded by apeda under quality development for exporters to set up their own in house lab or you know uh, before giving it to the external lab for exports they can set up their own in house lab for that for which we give them financial assistance if you want to set up fsms that is called food safety management system which is hscp it is very uh, critical for the processing facility people for that also we give them financial assistance we have recognized fsms food safety management system implementation agencies and the accreditation agencies certification agencies which are given in our website if any of the processing industry people would like to take the certificate from them they also get the financial assistance without the fsms certificate the processed food products cannot be exported to any other country so it is a must for all the processed food industry people they can get quality they can get assistance under our quality development component market development is like as i said for biosol meat or for reverse biosol meat where we call the importers from the other countries and the exporters from our country they will have a, a meeting for 2 to 3 days that also apida organizes from time to time and if we have to take trade delegations also we give them financial assistance to whenever uh, wherever the ministry decides we have implemented certain software for traceability where the produce or the product can be traced back when it is exported when we export rice we have a traceability system uh, which where when when it is exported when the importing country imports it and they find some problem in the quality that that particular uh, you know shipment or that particular produce can be traced back in our country from where it was and we also conduct root cause analysis for any for the complaint that we received so for horticulture we have a separate system for peanuts we have a separate system meat net separate trace net is specially for organic products where everything the data is captured under the traceability 
and uh, we also we are also coming up with separate uh, traceability for banana and the rice we also have a separate uh, portal for farmer farmers and the exporters where they can register themselves under farmer connect portal the farmers can register themselves giving their basic details like name mobile number contact address and the produce that they are producing and the exporters also similarly can do that so that they can link you know they can have an interaction one to one without any middleman so the farmers will be able to see the exporters pan india and the exporters will be able to see the farmers pan india they can put their requirement they can interact with each other so uh, i have i have given some information about uh, the uh, this thing uh, how to uh, get the information from our website but let me also show you when you get into apida.gov.in this is the website Ma'am, we can see your screen, ma'am. Can you see? Yes, but it's not moving to the web page. So under this, you will get the product information. What are all the products under our catalog? The schemes, financial assistance schemes that we extend, and also the other government department schemes like what is NABARD giving to the uh, uh, entrepreneurs under MOFP, Ministry of Food Processing Industries. Under Kisan Sampada Yojana and also under PLA scheme. Exporters directory you will have, exporters status you can take, and processing industry people should have to get. So, this is the recognition criteria that one has to follow. And recognized organizations, FSMS certification agencies we have. FSMS implementation agencies we have. If you get your certificate through these agencies, you are eligible to get the financial assistance. And the authorized labs also we have, which are specifically authorized for the scope is given against each and every product, which can be seen. So this is how we take the uh, data and the exporters also can take the data from our website. Thank you so much.